Well, Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> this is going to be the first, my first, sh first shave of the year because I didn't shave New Year's Day. Um, I didn't shave yesterday, the second. Today's the third and I haven't shaved. Now I say first because I did use the electric razor down here on my neck because it drives me nuts, but I don't count that as shaving. I just don't. Eh. So we're going to do a back to basics shave. I'm going to get this off. Can you see? Once again, I ask you, do I look ragged or do I look rugged? It's the gray, you see? I don't even know if you can see it or not. I can see it. If you were here, you'd see it too. All right, back to basics. Simple New Year's shave, nothing fancy. We got the Holy Trinity, folks. We got the, well, it's four because of the blade inside, the feather blade. We got the Holy Trinity. Where are we got to hold this sucker up? There you go. It's, it's Grandpa Grungy. My Barbasol and my Osage. That's all you need. Oh, wait, there's a blade in there. Better blade, of course. I got this on six. Got my 1960 Grandpa Grungy Fat Boy for the first shave of 2022. I hope you all had a nice night. I hope you weren't hung over the next day. And if you were, I hope you're not hung over now. Because if you did, woof, that would be a heck of a party. If you're still hung over two days later, wow. I can't drink like that anymore, folks. Not that I ever really did that much, you know, I wasn't that crazy, but I've had my moments when I was younger. But now I could have one glass of scotch and have a dang hangover, so. Ugh. So, Barbasol, you know it, you love it. And if you can't get it, I wish you could. I know it's hard outside the States. So I did take a shower and I did my hair, as you can tell. And uh, I realized it's getting close to haircut time because once it starts to poof out of the sides a little too much, I don't like that. I don't like that. You know, when I was a teenager, I had the dumbest hair. At least I felt like it was the dumbest hair ever. It was flat and 80s and, you know, it kind of curled. If it got too long, like, I had sort of bangs that sweat. And I never knew what to do with it. I wish somebody would have told me what to do with it. You could do whatever you wanted. Did I tell you how I changed to this hairstyle, this kind of upsweep thing instead of the flat laydown? Like if you watch my early videos, that was in the old flat laydown days, even though it was slicked back. Do you remember Paul Williams, the singer-songwriter from the 70s? He had famously limp, flat, bad 70s blonde hair. He's a strange looking fellow to begin with, but man, is he talented. He wrote like the Rainbow Connection and stuff like that. Paul Williams, look into him if you don't know him. Uh, there's actually a documentary about him. I can't remember the name of it though. Anyway, check it out. So I was watching this Paul Williams documentary a few years ago, famous for his flat, flimsy 70s hair like I had that I hated. And he had spiked hair in this video, modern day video, modern uh, documentary. I was like, wait a minute. How does, how does he get his hair to stick up his? <laughs> and so I realized Duh, Psh, such a dummy. And I wish I'd known this years earlier when I was in middle school, just use products, products in your hair. I used mousse and a little hairspray to get it. And then I combed it up like that. That's what I did, that's all. And uh, so if you've got limp kind of fine hair that feels like you just can't do anything with it, give it a try, give it a try. I know this is, I shouldn't even be telling you this. This is dumb, but I swear it's the strangest thing I'm what you call a late bloomer, folks. Like, I don't feel like I, I hit my stride, like really, till I was about 30, you know? And then I was at the peak, and now it's all downhill, but I learned so much after 30, and even after 40, I'm still learning stuff that I felt like I should have known a long time ago, and I should have known. I should have known it. But anyway, if you want to change something about yourself, you probably can. Just give it a try. It's very hard to uh, get into that mindset, but you should try. And I know now, you know, you got the whole thing. It's like, oh, after the holidays, you feel like you've gained 20 pounds from all the eggnog and cookies and whatever. And now, oh gosh, now you're seeing the ads for Planet Fitness and oh, I feel terrible about, I gotta go to the gym and I gotta, you know, I believe me, I've been there. I've been there every dang year. Oh, I feel a little bit of that myself, you know, because, you know, I've been doing this intermittent fasting since May. And, you know, I let it go a little bit longer during the holidays. I'm back on the wagon today, folks. Back on the 11 to 7. Now, I've never broken the 11 a.m. I always eat at 11. But I have let it go later in the night on uh, special occasions or holidays. 
So I understand what it's like to feel that like, ugh, despair. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got this long row to hoe. Where's the first pass? Man, you cannot go wrong with the Holy Trinity. Just a good razor, doesn't have to be this. A good shave and cream doesn't have to be this, and a good aftershave. Find what works best for you. This is mine. This is one of mine. Now there are offshoots, of course. You know, like uh, like the Cremo or the uh, Captain's Choice Cherry, but those are like that's like sprinkles on top of the already delicious simple cake. And not every cake needs a bunch of sprinkle. You know, sometimes you just want to. Sometimes you just want a little Debbie snack cake. You know, you want a zinger. You want a vanilla zinger. Or chocolate zinger. Oh, I got a weakness for zingers. Can I tell you? You know what zingers are? Over here in the States, they're like a, a finger cake uh, with a little frosty on top and filling in the middle, cream filling. Oh, I don't know if you have them over in the UK or not. But I got to tell you, one of my weaknesses in life is snack cakes. <laughs> you should have seen how we were stocking up on tasty cakes at the Wawa in Pennsylvania. I'm a little Debbie man, and my wife is a Wawa girl. So, or a, sorry, a tasty cake girl. I'm a Wawa man, that's for sure. I went to Wawa on Christmas Eve this year. I loved it. I could, couldn't have asked for a better Christmas <laughs> Eve than going down to Wawa and getting some candy for stocking stuffers. Mm. You know, I got this thing dialed to a six because I was getting tons of nicks. And I always get nicked by Grandpa Grungy. I always have. It's just, you know, par for the course. Comes with the territory, as they say. And so I decided to change that, kind of like what we were talking about. If you want to change something about yourself, I know you're stuck in your ways, because believe me, I know what it's like to have a routine that you want to stick to, because it's important. It's important to have routines, you know? Get up in the morning, you know, you have this for breakfast, you have this cup of coffee, you go do this thing, you turn on the sprinkler, whatever you do, however you get dressed or ready in the morning, it's really important to have those. But sometimes it's a bad habit that you need to get out of, and you know it, but you just don't want to admit it. Oh, believe me, I'm coming from decades, decades of struggling with my weight, and luckily right now I'm being at a point where I have done something about it for the past seven, eight months. So I feel good, but it's the maintenance part now. But anyway, having said all this, any changes you make in your life, you have to be mentally ready for it. Don't try to force it because somebody else told you you should. Don't even do it if you, you know, you know, you know it like mentally you know, right? Oh, I know I should. But your brain is going to be overruled by your heart and your emotions and everything else. So that, that heart and those emotions and that brain all have to be lined up. So don't feel bad if it's not lining up right now, because it will, but you have to think about it. Think about it lining up. To just the, uh, the mental gymnastics to, uh, to get there. All right, there's the second pass. Oh, I'm feeling so good. Feeling so good. Don't need that much on the second or third pass. And uh, yeah. I love using Barbasol, but I also love using all my fancy soaps and brushes and things. But for this one, I just wanted to go simple, you know, back to basics. Did I tell you what I did for New Year's Eve of 2000, you know, into the millennium? Now, I know technically 2001 is the beginning of the millennium. It was the year 2000. It was New Year's Eve 1999. And everyone was scared of Y2K. Now, if, you were, if you're less than 22 years old, you're not going to remember any of this. But we were all worried about Y2K bug in computers, like <gasps> the whole world's computer systems are going to reset because when they started creating dates on computers, they only had a two-digit placeholder, not a four. So if it goes back to zero, two zeros, like in the year 2000, the computer is going to think it's 1900. Of course, none of that happened. But we were all scared. Why? Blame whoever you want to blame. So, what our idea was, my friend, who I'm, my dearest friend, who I've known for 30 years now, uh, lived and grew up in Marfa, Texas. Now, you've probably all heard of Marfa, Texas by now, but back in the 80s, when I first went, it was a podunk town. So, we decided, let's go out to Marfa, Texas, and we will act as if it is 
New Year's Eve going into 1900 instead of 2000. And what that meant was my buddy and I and my friend Claire, we were testing or we were scouting out someplace far out of town. Now, Marfa, Texas is in the middle of nowhere, West Texas. I mean, in the middle of the Chinati mountain ranges and the, the flat desert lands, it is remote. It takes about six hours drive from here. So what we wanted to do was get even farther out, even more remote. So we packed up our old cowboy pistols because we wanted to shoot them off in the air at midnight, 1900, middle of nowhere, West Texas. Let's get the old thumb buster out, the old Colt 45, you know, the old cowboy one, fire it off into the air at midnight. So we do this, we find a remote location about four, I don't know, three or four miles outside of town. So even more in the middle of nowhere, pitch black, freezing cold. And my buddy and I are out there and we hear coyotes off in the dark. It's just the two of us, I mean, middle of nowhere. And we hear coyotes. We can't see them, but we can hear them. Luckily, we got our pistols with us. <laughs> we might have had a little whiskey. 1900, 1900. The opposite of 2000. We thought, you know, oh, the future. In the year 2000. Have you ever heard that? After you're done watching this, go to YouTube and do In the Year 2000, Conan O'Brien. Hilarious bit. So we got a little spooked by the sound of like a pack of wolves or coyotes. We weren't quite sure. Probably just coyotes, not wolves. But uh, we freaked ourselves out. We stayed out there till midnight. We fired our pistols off into the air and we hightailed it back into town <laughs> to the warmth of my friend's house and the fire. But that's what I did. New Year's Eve, 1999 into 2000. We're all worried the computers when I think it was 1900. I wanted to act like it was 1900, just in a small way. So that was fun. But gosh, it's been 22 years now. That's unbelievable to me. Woo! Why are you watching some old man reminisce on YouTube? That's crazy. Go watch some TikTok or something. Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> okay, let's wash off. Third pass. I feel like I'm rambling. Well, only 12 minutes. That's not bad. I thought I had gone on for longer than that. I don't want to go on too long. I want to, don't want to overstate my welcome. Especially with the new year and all, you know. Sorry if I was like a slightly bah humbuggy for uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve, but it's just that kind of year this year. That's all. That's all. No big deal. All right. The Osage Rub. I cannot go wrong. If you never tried it, you should. If you can try it, do so. If you haven't, that's all right. Just imagine. Mmm. It's like a tingly green blanket you just wrap around your face. And it smells good, too. It's one of those blankets that actually smells... Blankets shouldn't have a smell, should they? I don't know. These are the questions. I don't know. I don't know. All right, everybody. Happy New Year to all of you. I am clean-shaven. I did get a nick right there. So that's good. And a tiny one there. So I'm going to do this. Make a, make a connection. Make a love connection. Make a love connection today, won't you? No, don't do that. Just have a good shave. Have a good day. Have a happy New Year. And I will see you all very soon on Friday. Coming up. All right, everybody.